Hey everyone, let's go ahead and talk about inflection points. First, let's start with the definition of an inflection point. So an inflection point occurs whenever the uh, graph of our function f changes concavity. So earlier we discussed how the concavity of our function f is described using the second derivative of our function. And so if we're looking for where the uh, function changes concavity, that's uh, equivalent to looking where th that second derivative changes signs. Remember, when the second derivative is positive, we are concave up, we're bending upwards. When the second derivative is negative, we are concave down and bending downwards. So the inflection point where we change concavity is where our second derivative is changing from positive to negative. We'll also see that this uh, change in concavity that is our inflection point is going to correspond to actually maximums and minimums, not of the original function f, but of that first derivative of our function f prime. So let's go ahead and look at some examples of some inflection points and see that this kind of uh, situation is actually occurring. All right, so on our set of axes here, I'm just going to graph a function that has uh, concave down on one part and concave up on another. So maybe we are concave down and increasing up till this point right here. And then here we're going to change concavities. This is going to be our inflection point. And so now we need to be, we were concave down, so now it could be concave up. Maybe we'll still be increasing. We are now uh, concave up and increasing. So our graph is going to look something like this, kind of like a shifted cubic function. Right, so here we have an example of our inflection point. To the left of our inflection point, we can see our graph is bent down, so it is concave down. That means the second derivative is negative. And then when we look to the right of our inflection point, we are now concave up. And so that means our second derivative has to be positive. So how do we start identifying where our inflection points actually occur? Well, one way to switch from negative to positive or from positive to negative is by passing through zero. So similar to how we found the uh, maximums and minimums of our function, we start by finding the inflection points by looking for where a derivative is equal to zero. But it's not where the first derivative is equal to zero, it's where the second derivative is equal to zero. So to actually find an inflection point, it's kind of a, a multi-step process. The first thing we do is we find where the second derivative is equal to zero. So we'll find the x values that make that second derivative equal to zero. And then after that, we have to check, make sure our uh, concavity actually changes. We have to see that that second derivative actually has a sign change as we pass through that zero. Does it switch from positive to negative or from negative to positive? And so to finish finding our inflection point, after we found the locations where our second derivative is equal to zero, we then test the second derivative on either side of that zero. And as long as we have a sign change from positive to negative or from negative to positive, then we guarantee that our concavity changes as we pass through that point. And well, if our concavity changes, then we have an inflection point. And if we think about it, this process that we are doing is just really mimicking that first derivative test, but not on the function f, but on the function f prime of x. To find our inflection points, we really are just running that first derivative test, but on the first derivative of our function. And that's one way to see that an inflection point actually corresponds to either a maximum or a minimum of the derivative of the original function. All right, and if we do some analysis on the graph of our green function f of x here, we should be able to see that the uh, inflection point really does correspond to that maximum or minimum of the first derivative of our function. And so if we look at these points to the left of our inflection point, we can see our function is increasing, so its first derivative is always positive. At the inflection point itself in this case, we can see we have a horizontal tangent line, so there f prime would be equal to zero. And to the right of our inflection point, we can see our function has returned to increasing. So our function, its first derivative, is going to go back to being some positive values. Right? All these values are positive. But if we think about looking at the graph of our first derivative function over the same interval, including our inflection point, well, we have some positive value that goes down to 0. And then we start going back up from there. And so well, this little blue sketch up here is the graph of our first derivative. And well, we can see that inflection point 
corresponds to a local minimum. So when it comes to actually finding the inflection points, uh, we just use this little process, find out where the second derivative is equal to zero, and then make sure we have a sign change. But for lots of contextual problems, having that interpretation of the inflection point as a maximum or minimum of the derivative of f is really important. If you ever heard the uh, term like uh, the point of diminishing returns or the point of increasing returns, those are uh, referring to certain types of, of these inflection points.